Breaking new details about North Korea's missile launch, Kim Jong-un's regime firing what's believed to be an intermediate-range ballistic missile over Japanese airspace for the second time in a month. Now an emergency U.N. meeting has been called, and our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, has all the latest developments from D.C. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Amy. It is clear this morning that neither condemnation, threats of force, or sanctions are stopping Kim Jong-un in his quest to perfect a nuclear missile program. Alarms blaring in Japan as North Korea launched yet another missile over Japanese territory for the second time in a month. Another extreme provocation by North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. The intermediate range ballistic missile launched from the North Korean capital of Pyongyang, passing over Japan just 10 minutes later, landing over 1,200 miles off the coast of the Japanese island of Hokkaido, traveling a total distance of 2,300 miles. American tourist Matt Gallat, staying in Hokkaido, was awoken by the deafening sirens. Find shelter in a uh, basement. North Korea just launched a missile. The South Korean military responding immediately, launching its own missile 150 miles into the Sea of Japan, a precise show of force meant to warn Kim Jong-un that South Korea can target him directly. Secretary of Defense James Mattis saying the launch put millions of Japanese in duck and cover. And Secretary of State Rex Tillerson calling on China and Russia to take direct actions of their own. This is the 14th time North Korea has launched ballistic missiles this year the fifth since the start of July. Speaking at a disarmament conference in Geneva, North Korea rejected the latest sanctions outright, calling the UN resolution unlawful. The Washington regime finally opt for political, economic, and military confrontation. The DPRK is ready to use any form of ultimate means. The forthcoming measures by DPRK will make the U.S. suffer the greatest pain it's never experienced in its history. Thank you. Although Monday's U.N. Security Council vote was unanimous, significantly including China and Russia, Pyongyang seems undeterred by the mounting pressure. The new restrictions on trade with North Korea might, over time, hurt its economy, but it's not clear that that will be enough to convince Kim Jong-un's regime to choose another path. has begun major military exercises along the European Union's eastern flank amid rising tensions with NATO. Some parts of the drills, codenamed Zapad, are being carried out outside Russia's mainland, namely in the Kaliningrad exclave and Belarus. The Russian Defense Ministry announced that the war games will involve nearly 13,000 troops. It says the exercises are of a strictly defensive nature and not directed against any other state or group of countries. Russia's drills come three days after NATO forces began joint military exercises with Ukrainian troops inside the country. Tensions between Moscow and the Western military alliance have been since 2014 when the conflict in eastern Ukraine began. The Kremlin accuses NATO of lining up across the Russian borders. The alliance says its eastward expansion is aimed at deterring, quote, Moscow's threats. The one thing you really notice here in Raqqa City, apart from the destruction which is pretty much everywhere all around us is the absence of people. When we've been into other cities in Mosul and Sark where IS have fled, people were always coming out, but not here. And the, the reason for that 
We just heard some coalition airstrikes not that long ago that rattled the shutters here. And we can hear artillery, and that artillery shelling is almost constant. It's because the real fighting is going on from about a, a kilometre, two kilometres from where I am right now. There, people are facing IS snipers, minefields, and coalition bombardments from artillery and from those coalition jets. The old city is just down here, actually. So, imagine living in that for a moment. And if we just look up here, this was somebody's home. Look at the, the bullet holes all over that. There almost isn't a building in this city that we've passed that has been untouched by the violence. And if we just move down here a bit closer, beyond there, right inside Raqqa, almost an ironclad death trap has been created for people, where they're facing snipers, they're facing minefields. Another boom from artillery, I think that was just then. There's no option of escape for civilians. It's much better for them at the moment. There's less risk if they stay in the midst of all of that in IS territory than try to escape. That's why these streets are so empty. More gunfire just in the background there. One of the things to bear in mind is there's about 20 to 25,000 people still inside the city, trapped by IS, trapped by those coalition airstrikes. About half of them are children. Their options are very limited at the moment. No one's coming back to this city anytime soon. It's going to take a long time before it's retaken. The SDF say it may take them a month, it might take a bit longer than that. But for the people trapped inside Raqqa, it's absolute hell and they have almost no escape. Hurricane Irma, the strongest Atlantic hurricane on record. Irma spent longer than 10 days at hurricane strength. For more than three days, the storm was an extremely dangerous Category 5. It maintained 185 mile per hour winds for 37 hours, a record. The storm tore through the Caribbean, causing more than $10 billion in damage across the islands. Approximately 6.5 million Floridians were ordered to evacuate before Irma's arrival there. It slammed into the Florida Keys as a Category 4 storm with 130 mile per hour sustained winds. At its peak, over 6.5 million Florida households were without power, more than 65% of the state. In the days after the storm, it was unclear exactly how many people died as a result of Irma's wrath. The British Virgin Islands look like they've been hit by the blast wave of a bomb. On the biggest island of Tortola, houses have been ripped apart and contents scattered for miles. An over 20-foot wave surge crushed boats, beaching them among the rubble. It started off with wind. Oren Glasgow was at home as Irma hit. This section of my, my mom's room, the roof came off. Then my bedroom came off. We went to the living room. Glass started to bust. We had all of this boarded up. You've lost everything. Everything. People talk about the winds that came through here as if they were alive, as if it come from another world. And now five days after the hurricane struck, they're in desperate need of food, of shelter and clean water. Others are just simply desperate to leave. The shock of seeing this terrifying force of nature is overwhelming. Some are trying to fly home to relatives in the UK. The Masson family made it to the shelter after neighbours with machetes hacked through debris to help them hike from their damaged home. We don't know what planes are going or when they're going. But literally this morning was the first time we'd really had any news at all of what was happening. Some residents have criticised the UK government's response to this crisis as pathetic and slow. There are also reports of looting across the island as many are desperate for basic supplies. There are large queues for food and for petrol. A strong earthquake has hit off the southern coast of Mexico in one of the Gulf regions there. The magnitude 8 quake was also felt in Guatemala and as far north as Mexico City where people fled buildings fearing the buildings were going to collapse. The earthquake has also caused a tsunami in the area.
τέτοιο πράγμα. Τέτοια καταστροφή, δεν ξέρω αν θα ο λιμνώνα αυτό το μέρο που λέγεται λιμνώνα, αν θα μπορέσει να ξαναζήσει. Δεν μπορώ να το καταλάβω. Μπαίναμε μέσα και τα ψαράκια μα τσιμπάγανε. Μα τσιμπάγανε στην κυριολεξία, μα τσιμπάγανε τα ψαράκια. Κατάλαβε. Τι είναι αυτό το πράγμα τώρα. Δηλαδή οι απροσεξίε, ε, αμέλειε, ε, τι, τι να πω, δεν μπορώ να καταλάβω. Venezuela continues to reel under a political and economic crisis, but controversial President Nicolas Maduro shows no sign of changing course. The United Nations has criticized Maduro's handling of anti-government protests, and U.S. President Trump has approved heavy sanctions against the country, labeling Maduro a dictator. Maduro now says he's willing to be a dictator if it will help turn the country around. By hook or by crook, I want to do it the good way. But if I have to do it by crook and turn into a dictator to guarantee prices for the people, I'll do it by crook. Now you know, and you know that I don't speak for the sake of talking. Spiraling costs and food shortages continue to plague the country, despite its vast natural resources. Venezuela has some of the largest proven oil reserves in the world, but falling oil prices, mismanagement and sanctions have depleted the OPEC nation's currency reserves and pushed the economy toward collapse. For the second day running, thousands of Haitians have taken to the streets to protest against the tax rise on everyday goods. Violence flared after attacks on businesses in the capital Port-au-Prince and demonstrators clash with riot police who fired tear gas and warning shots in the air. It comes as the impoverished country struggles to deal with the aftermath of Hurricane Irma last week. It unleashed raids that flooded farms and affected some 18,000 people in the worst-hit areas.